What's up, you guys? I'm Natasha. This is the kitchen at Chef and Pepper's Farm, and it's time for another freezer meal video. I have this dream of starting these videos with this list of exactly what I'm going to be making and then sticking to it, not changing anything, and it being organized and smooth flowing. That's not going to happen. That's not me. I have a rough list and, you know, an outline. What's the saying? Like an outline and a rough. I have. Um... A, some I have a tactical goal and some rough. What is it? You have some tactical goals and a rough approach. I have some tactical goals and a rough approach. That is how I'm I'm taking on this freezer meal video. I have a bunch of meat that I need to do something with. I have some hopeful ideas in my head, and we'll see how far we get. It's going to start off with two things, though. We're going to start off by making some flatbreads because I saw these recipes for crispy chicken flatbreads and they looked so good that I want to make those and then and flatbread freezes really well and so if you haven't made flatbread and then frozen it it's excellent that way it's really really good you can prepare it completely freeze it between paper towels and then take it out and it's awesome you can make flatbread pizzas with pesto and feta and you can do a bunch of other things with it and then I need to make some miniature buns kind of like the Hawaiian rolls but not exactly for some sliders that I would like to get made and put into the freezer as well. So I'll grab a clip for my hair and we're gonna roll some dough. Can you make me coffee? Yeah. Good. So oh, I recently got asked why my husband is in the background of the videos. Okay, because this is my real life. Okay, I don't edit or adjust anything for you guys. And second of all, I don't know why I would because I really like my husband a lot. So I enjoy being around him as much as I possibly can. So if I get the chance to, to be around him, we like to do that as much as possible. So he often does a lot of work from the counter so we can talk and chat while I cook and do other chores, so. That's right. Yep. Oh my gosh, I had some weirdo. I had to walk from the channel actually because or shadow ban, I don't know which one it is. That's just what I call it. Um, who was like, why are why is there so much of you in your videos? You should show the children more. <laughs> and then all I could think to myself was, I'm a little worried about your interest here and you're going to go away. <laughs> Not that I don't mind having the kids in the videos when they want to be, but they're children. Like again, this is our real lives. And if they're around and a part of things, like Landon trying to help make the coffee right now, that's my real life. But the channel is not about the children. And if that's why you're watching the videos. Yes. No, no, no. Don't be weird, okay? Don't be weird. I have a pretty low tolerance for nonsense on the channel. If you say something rude, you're done. If you say something inappropriate, you're done. I, I don't, I don't have time for that sort of nonsense. I'm a busy mom with a small farm. No, thank you. Are you making me coffee? No. What? <gasps> You're making dad coffee, not me? Well, it's mine. It's mine. Oh, I heard the guilt there. I heard it. I heard the it's guilt. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> Say hi. It's funny. It's hey, Hans. It's your favorite? Yeah. Hands. Wow, that is a big cut. All right, so I will link the recipe for the flat bread in the description. If I use recipes other than my own in this video, I will link them for you below. And then, oh, by the time this comes out, the website will probably already be live, and then you can find the rest of these recipes on our website. So the recipe calls to take the dough and divide it into 12 pieces. I prefer to weigh it. And I'm going to shoot for two and a half to three ounces. Okay, so that's 2.8. And then once that's done, I'm just going to kind of fold this into a little ball. I'm actually going to do this with my bread for the rolls as well.
All right, so these have been rising for the last 35, 40 minutes, and these are ready to go into the oven now. I'm gonna put these in there at 400 until they're brown on the top, and then they should be good. Yeah. Oftentimes when I'm doing these freezer meals, I will make a lot of things, and typically one of them will get used whenever we are having lunch or, or dinner, because when I'm cooking like this, it's an all day thing, so. All right, now that the bulk of our sliders have been made and I'm at a point where I can sacrifice some stove space for my flatbreads, even though we're still in the process of cooking those, I'm going to start working on a crispy honey sriracha beef recipe. So we're going to start by making the glaze for this and then frying it up in a pan. All right, so nice big bowl. We're going to use three tablespoons of soy sauce. Three tablespoons of ketchup. We're going to add in three tablespoons of sriracha. This is a medium sriracha. It's not like a super crazy hot one. And so I'm going to actually use this entire little bottle. So that'll be about three tablespoons. We're going to add in two tablespoons of honey. And then about a tablespoon of minced garlic. Add that in here. I'm going to get a whisk out and we're going to mix it all up. All right, we're going to mix this all together. All right, so here I have my beef, and I'm going to coat this in some flour. And then I'm going to get my air fryer, and we are going to air fry this. I'm going to throw this into the air fryer for 10 to 15 minutes and I'm going to repeat this until my beef is done and then I will add this into our sauce and we'll crisp it one more time. Alright, so here we have our sauce. This is the first of our crispy beef and we're just going to drop this in here. And I'm going to repeat this process until all of the beef is cooked and coated in sauce. So next we're going to be doing a bolognese garlic bread taco. And to do that we need to melt some butter and some garlic, right? Yeah. Right. Also, can you grab me some bolognese sauce from in there? Thank you. So I'm going to take about two sticks of butter and I'm going to melt this. Alright, here we have our bolognese sauce. Had a whole thing of ground beef somewhere. I don't know where exactly. Maybe it's still in here? No? Yes? We don't know. I'm not sure. Uh... Okay. Where is the ground beef? No, that's ground beef. I don't see any ground beef here. Uh, I don't see any ground beef. Before. So this bolognese sauce already has a bit of pork in it and it already has some beef in it. But since we're turning this into tacos, we're going to add a lot more ground beef to this and we're going to really bulk it up. And I'm going to actually add some taco seasonings to my ground beef that I have. So we're going to do that in one second. But I want to make a note. You'll probably notice 
This camera looks really weird. So you'll probably notice that my freezer meals have a tendency to look a little bit different than other freezer meals. And that's because when I first started doing freezer meal cooking, I didn't like it. I don't like just dumping something in the crock pot all the time and, and it not tasting good and kind of being mushy. So I started making freezer meals work for me. I started freezing recipes in a way that made them actually taste good and be enjoyable. So that is what we are doing. It's a little bit different. You do a bit more cooking beforehand, but everything tastes way better. It's, it's really worth it. So we're gonna make this beef bolognese taco. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our bolognese sauce that, we are, that already has a little bit of ground beef and pork in it, and we're gonna add more to that just to beef it up since it is going into a taco. So here is our bolognese sauce. Here we have about a pound of ground beef. I'm gonna add this in here. And then we're gonna add a little bit of taco seasoning in here and a little bit of salt. Now we're gonna mix this up. Yes, it's beef. I think she, I think dad just played it for Alexa. Okay, and then I'm gonna add in a handful of mozzarella cheese. They won't crisp as well if they touch one another. You want to take some tortillas. And put them off to the side so we can remember our butter and then make our garlic butter. Okay. Here we have our butter. That was beautiful, babe. We're going to add into this, because this is two sticks of butter, we're going to add into this two teaspoons of garlic powder, a teaspoon of salt. I'm too short to reach my parsley, so we're going to use Italian seasonings. We're going to mix this up. We're going to take our tortilla. I'm going to take a fourth of this mixture. I'm going to put it into my tortilla, spread it out. That, that seems like it's too much. That's just too much. I'm going to fold this over. Hopefully find what I'm looking for. Apparently not. There we go. And I'm going to take some of this butter mixture and I'm going to brush it on the top. After this, I can either pan fry it or I can put some parchment paper down into a foil pan and start layering these. like this. So that way, whenever it is that I want to actually have these for dinner, all I have to do is pull this out, let it thaw, put it in a pan for a minute or so. It'll crisp on both sides. It'll heat the stuff in the middle. It'll be good to go. I like to fry them up for a moment ahead of time and then throw them in the oven afterwards, but you can do it either way, especially since I have all these pans out from all this flatbread I made. I think I went a little crazy on the flatbread. It's a lot of flatbread. See, I like I like to say that he hangs out because he likes me and my company, but the truth is maybe he just wants to sample the food. I don't know. <laughs> oh, can I have one of those tortillas? I will absolutely let you guys sample one of these. We might even have some for dinner tonight, and then I might put some in the freezer for the next freezer meal. You are very welcome. The, uh, they're garlic bread bolognese tacos. I feel like such a chef. You are a chef. <laughs> but I feel like it when I can say things like bolognese garlic bread taco. <laughs> it just sounds yeah, so fancy. fancy. <laughs> That's you're a fancy mom. I'm a fancy mom. <laughs> All right, well, I'll let you know when it's ready. There's no point in having a plate yet. We're, we're not at plate level yet. 
No, I, and I know, Riley. I know. <laughs> you heard me. Stop farting. That's rough. <laughs> I don't even know why. I'm on a real bolognese kick today. So we're also going to make bolognese sliders as well. Because it just seems like fun. And to do that, we're going to make more bolognese mixture. Oh, you just oh, 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 wow. This is amazing. This is the best taco I've ever had. Ah. Almost like eating a pizza taco. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. I am. I need this version of tacos for the rest of my life. Loving this They're response. Good. That makes me. A lot me... going on in here. Yeah, a lot of flavors. All right. So what I'm going to do is while these are cooking, I'm going to take some of my mini rolls that we made. I already sliced these and we are going to open these up. We're going to top these with our bolognese sauce and some cheese and some garlic butter because that's the sort of mood I'm in and make sliders. So. Okay, that one's done. I'm going to set these over here for one second so you guys can see what these look like when they come out. And then we're just gonna keep the process going. If we had smell vision, I would want you to smell this. This smells really good. All right. And then I have my little pan here. Okay, very good. Finish opening these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to take these and I'm going to brush them lightly with the same garlic butter on the bottom. And then I'm going to add bolognese into this and if it spills a little bit it is not the end of the world I can get on the bottom I'm okay with that I'm gonna add a light little layer of cheese to this I'm going to put the tops back on here. All right, so I'm going to take these. Now that they're all assembled, I'm going to brush the same garlic mixture on the top of these. And then whenever it is time to bake them, I will take them out, throw them in the oven at 425 after letting them thaw, and just let them heat up. Everything is cooked, so all you really have to do is is warm it to a light toast. You can do it right in the pan. You don't have to worry about it. And it's a really easy, delicious meal that everybody loves. Not your average freezer meal. Try this. Try this, try this, try this. Pick one and try it. Pick one, anyone, and try it. That was good. <laughs> I smell. Yay. Ella, do you want to try one? Let's try one. Of this food. All 
right, so my mic went out when I was trying to explain this, but this is the process of making red pesto. So all you need is a cup of sun-dried tomatoes, put this into your food processor, add into that about seven ounces of roasted red peppers, whether you brew them yourself or you buy them from the grocery store, and then about a fourth of a cup of loosely packed basil. You don't need a whole lot here. It's not actual pesto made from basil and pine nuts. Then you're gonna put in a clove of garlic, as well as a half a cup of toasted pine nuts. I also really like this with almonds. It's my favorite with pesto as well. And then a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese, a fourth a cup of olive oil, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a fourth a teaspoon of pepper. And then you just blend it all up in your food processor and voila, red pesto. We are going to make pepperoni pasta. It's very simple. I already pre-boiled some noodles. I'm looking for my container at the moment, which is right here. We're gonna take some homemade spaghetti sauce, layer our pan with it. We're going to add in a tablespoon of smoked paprika. No, teaspoon, sorry. And a teaspoon of oregano. I'm gonna mix this up. And then I am going to take my spaghetti noodles. I cut them in half so they're not too long for the kiddos. And I'm gonna start mixing this in here. At the same time, I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit of mozzarella and a couple of pepperonis. And I'll keep working the noodles into this. Hi guys. I love you guys. You need to come sit at the counter? All right, so now that that is all mixed in together, I'm gonna sprinkle some mozzarella on the top. I'm gonna throw a couple of pepperonis on the top. And this is a freezer meal that's so easy that it almost feels like you are cheating. And voila, pepperoni pasta, a piece of cake. Now we are going to take our red pesto. I'm going to take another noodle i'll do these ones pre-cooked these which was nice it made it a little bit easier because boiling noodles can be done at any point you can just boil them and set them off to the side and then use them the next day all right put those in there and then we are going to i need a that this is what i need i'm going to add in hmm, about four tablespoons. Four tablespoons of our red pesto. Well, that's probably more like a third of a cup. I'm going to add in the rest of this mozzarella, which is like, I don't know, a third of a cup. I'm gonna grab some shredded chicken. We're gonna throw this in here, and then I'm gonna heat this in the microwave so it can, I'll probably just heat it up. Heating it up will make it easier to stir it, which will be nice. We're going to mix this up. I'm going to add into here, I don't know, like two tablespoons of this garlic mixture that I have left over from the bolognese tacos too. All right, there we go. And then I need chicken, shredded chicken. I'm going to add into this about two cups of shredded chicken. And voila, 
don't fall. Thank you. Add this into its container. And we have red pesto chicken pasta. Beautiful. That looks so good. Yay. Boom, done. All right, we're gonna make some quick, easy mock barbecue pork chops. And we're gonna start this off with ketchup and maple syrup. We're going to use about mm, half a cup of ketchup and a fourth of a cup of maple syrup. I'm going to add into this a pinch of blackening seasoning, maybe about a teaspoon and a half. We're gonna mix this up and boom, that is done. That smells so much like barbecue sauce. I just cannot. Come on, don't give up on me. I know it's wet. Barbecue pork chops. We got seven pork chops here. No, oh man, I knew it. I knew it. I was waiting for it. It's totally my fault. Well, that's real cooking, isn't it? Sometimes you can just feel it right before it happens, and you're like, ah, oh, I should have known better. I knew, and I didn't listen, anyways. And I'm gonna have to clean up this mess before we go any further. And I am simply going to take my lemon pepper seasoning. We did make this together. So if you didn't see that video, I will link it for you in the description box. I love recipes like this for freezer meals because you don't have to do any work. I mean, it doesn't feel like anywhere compared to all the other stuff I was doing, like the pork. Not the pork, but the barbecued beef. I had to go back and forth and back and forth to the air fryer just because we have such a big family. It's not like I can follow the standard recipe that has like four servings. I have to kind of double that and sometimes triple it. So it's, it's a lot of back and forth. Whereas this is a piece of cake. So stuff like this, which always ends up tasting absolutely great is definitely my favorite. I'm gonna have to do this one more time because four pork chops is not gonna cut it for our family, but that way you get a general idea. So when we made this seasoning, it required the zest of a lemon. And to do that, you just zest the lemon and then you dehydrate it. And we ended up doing oranges and limes because of the fact that we were making Dan O seasoning as well. So I have all these zested lemons and limes in the refrigerator and stuff like this is perfect because I can just take this, cut this, put this whole lemon right in with my pork chops. And it's just an extra step of fabulousness that I would not normally take if we didn't actually just test these so boom now i feel extra fancy because there's actual lemons in the bag yay Done. 
So like I mentioned, we just got meats recently and pork chops. I buy the big pork loins and then I'll cut them into pork chop sections. And now I'm feeling really inspired. So we're also going to do blackened pork chops because yum. And we'll do those with lime, right? I have lime. We're going to do those with limes. So lime blackened pork chops. Yum. All right. So again, we have blackening seasoning. We made this in that same video. And I'm just going to sprinkle this on my pork chops. And you can go as heavy as you want on this or as light as you want on this, depending on how much seasoning you like on your pork chops. I'm going to sprinkle some salt on here as well. Blackened pork chops, lime. See, a lot of times I just end up coming up with it on the spot. I'm like, okay, I have these. This would taste good. And I would love to have this plan, but... Sometimes it doesn't work out that way. <laughs> guys, guys, please stop fighting. Remember, we like one another. We are friends. Family are friends, not food. Ella, did you get this? And then when it's time to cook these, I can just throw these in a pan and I can sear them or I could throw them in the crock pot or even the Instant Pot with the limes and everything. Don't even have to worry about it. Since I am so jazzed on this seasoning kick, we are going to do a Greek orange pork chop. And we're going to sprinkle our Greek seasoning onto our pork chops. Again, we made this. You guys probably get that by now. Sprinkle some salt on here. Flip these and season them again, this time without the salt. Move that out of the way really quickly. All right, orange, Greek pork chops. Sprinkle of salt. So toss this in the bag. Any extra seasonings on the plate. I guess it's gonna be lemon. I'm happy if I like want a roll. I'm really feeling inspired by this quick seasoning sort of situation. So I've got about two bags of fish and one more thing of pork chops. So we're gonna continue on this front. We're gonna go with a fajita, a fajita lime pork chop. I'm so happy I made all these seasoning ones. This has just made my life about a million times easier. Okay, well that came out a little bit quicker than I was anticipating. So what we're gonna do is take our, I'm gonna start slicing my lime in half and I'm gonna use it to move some of these spices around. So that way it's not just like all over one. Perfect, okay. Ta-da! 
my gosh, my apron is so filthy. <laughs> That's what hard work in the kitchen will do to you, though. All right. Boom. I'm going to rinse this off. All right, up next I have tilapia, and I'm going to do a peri-peri tilapia with lemon. Oh, I've got one lemon for this, one for the salmon. That'll use it up perfectly. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. It's all just working together. You know how some days it's, it's like nothing wants to work together, and then some days it's, it's, it all just falls into place, and you didn't even really try, and you know it's going to taste Perfectly good. That's that's today. I love today for that reason. Peri peri seasoning is really good. It's very easy to make. Again, same video. I keep saying it, but it's just the truth. If you watch the video, I'll show you how to make all those seasonings at home for yourself. Maybe I can even use this bag really like to reuse things when I can. Oh, it works. Peri, peri, fish. Lemon, fish. Cool. Ta-da! All right, we're gonna do Old Bay Salmon next. And for the time, I'm just going to take this giant cutting board and I'm going to get this out. There we go. This was from a big salmon thing that my husband cut up for me. And I am going to do a light little sprinkle of salt on the top of all of these. Okay. And then our Old Bay seasoning. We made this as well, so... It's very close. I can't really taste a difference. If you have a Old Bay refined palate, you might be able to. So it's not, you know, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like I, sometimes I start these sentences and my freezer videos aren't typically like my big videos. Those are typically the garden tours. And so sometimes I feel a little bit more comfortable saying things more freely in the non-big videos, but sometimes I'll start to say things. Like I'll have a thought and I'll want to share it. And then I stop myself, mostly because I don't think I have enough calluses on my soul yet for YouTube. <laughs> People really like to just say things and kind of nitpick at you. And from a logical perspective, it should really just roll off of your back. You should just let it go and not really let it bug you. But from a personal standpoint, I don't really have as many calluses on my soul as I would like. So, so yeah. So if you hear me randomly starting a thought and then stopping, it's not because I lost it. It's because I wondered if it was worth saying because of the people. <laughs> so. All right, moving on. This smells really good. Lit. I'm going to give this a label. Old Bay Lemon Salmon. Throw those in there, and voila! Old Bay Lemon Salmon. Where are we at? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Oh my gosh, we only need two more. Wouldn't it be great if I could just finish the last two? What do I have? I 
so happy if I could just finish the last two. Watch this big tub of chicken. That's not going to help me. All right. I have one more thing of pre-made pasta that I prepped. It's penne. And we are going to really quickly make an exceptionally easy dish, basically, because I have these things already canned in my freezer. Canned in my freezer. Canned in my pantry. Um, guacamole salsa. You can get this at the grocery store. You can make it yourself. And I mixed together sour cream. So like half a cup of sour cream, half a cup of Greek yogurt, four tablespoons of honey, a tablespoon of dried cilantro, salt and pepper, mix it together. It was a really good dipping sauce for these tacos that we had the other night. So I'm going to combine these. There's the sauce that I made. Here is some of our green salsa. I'm mix this up. And we are going to make guacamole We're going to make this guacamole salsa chicken penne pasta, and it's going to be great. And what I'm going to do is pour this over the top. I'm going to add in about two cups of shredded chicken. Oh, the lid's wet. That stinks. It's always so hard to write on these if they get wet. When you're doing a lot of stuff on the counter. I'm actually really excited to eat this. Okay, I need to come up with one more mentally in my mind. We're going to do a creamy red pesto chicken slider. So I'm going to take the rest of my red pesto in here. Yes, I do come up with a lot of these on the fly. Simply motivated to be done doing things like this. This is always pretty stressful for me, making the freezer meals. I wish I was super relaxed about it, but I get stressed out about having all this stuff out because tomorrow I have to go out and harvest a bunch of stuff from the garden. And so my thought is, okay, I'm going to have to use that too. So I'm now in this continual cycle of like making stuff and using stuff. I'm going to put into this about a cup of heavy cream because that will turn just about anything into a sauce. I'm going to give this a solid mix. Look at that. Looks almost like spaghetti sauce. And it's from the peppers in the garden and our onions and our garlic and our basil. So that just makes me feel super productive knowing that we grew it. Love it. What I'm going to do is I have cubed chicken. Chopped that up. I'm going to take this. I'm going to put it in here to marinate. And then I'm going to put it into a Ziploc bag. When it cooks in the crock pot, what will happen is I can shred up the cubes. I can use the sauce because this will turn into like a really runny sauce. I can take my mini rolls that we made, the chicken on it with a piece of lettuce and some cheese, drizzle the sauce on, done. Creamy red sliders, creamy red chicken sliders. Hey, I need somebody who has hands. So if you're a person, you have hands, and I gave birth to you, and you wanted to help me, I'd be okay with that. I just need somebody to hold a bag. What? Thank you, Angel. Come on, come on. All right, can you hold that for me? It's going to get heavy. Do you got it? Are you strong? Yeah. Okay. I don't know who's more nervous, you or me. Okay, now I'm going to try and, like, get this out with the thing. So, all right, try to give me some gap, okay? I'm, I'm not going to get on here. What is this? It's red pesto and heavy whipping cream. 
Thank you, my sweet girl. And you'll have to wash your hands, but I greatly appreciate your help. I'm gonna make sure we have enough sliders so I can put these together. I may have to cut some of these. I thought I cut them already, I'll have to see. I did. All right, I'm gonna clean up my counter so that way I can take a photo that looks good. Because apparently YouTube, it matters if you have a good cover photo. So I'm gonna clean up my counter, take a photo, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye y'all. I didn't even tell you my purpose for the flatbreads. What I would like to do is I'm gonna fry up a bunch of chicken tomorrow make chicken strips and I have these flatbreads and I want to use them and drizzle hot honey on top of them and make hot honey chicken flatbreads. So that's my game plan with those. That's why we made so many of them today. Mm -hmm.